Welcome to a lesson on discrete and continuous functions. For review, a function is a relation between a set of inputs and a set of permissible outputs with the property that each input is related to exactly one output. Now let's talk about discrete functions. In a discrete function, the input values can only assume certain values in the interval, usually only integers or whole numbers, but not always. We can say the input values are counted. In the graph of a discrete function, only the points that have meaning to the original problem are included in the graph. The graph of a discrete function may look like a scatter plot, as shown here below. Now let's talk about continuous functions. A continuous function allows the input values to assume any value in a given interval, and the points on the graph are connected with a line or curve. We can also say the input values are measured. You can draw the graph of a continuous function without ever having to lift your pencil off the paper. Here's an example of a continuous function. Notice how all of the points are connected. Now let's look at some examples of continuous functions and discrete functions. The table below gives three examples of continuous and discrete functions along with the input and output quantities for each. For continuous functions, number one, the height of a ball as it is thrown through the air, where the input quantity is time in seconds and the output quantity is height in feet. Number two, the speed of a truck as it drives along the highway, where the input quantity is time in seconds and the output quantity is speed in miles per hour. And number three, the braking distance required by a cement truck to come to a complete stop. The input quantity is the speed of the truck in miles per hour and the output quantity is the braking distance in feet. For these three functions, the inputs can take on any value over a given interval, and all the points of these three graphs would be connected. Now let's get our examples of discrete functions. Number one, the number of felony arrests in a town each year, where the input quantity is years since 2005. The output quantity is the number of felony arrests. Number two, the cost of food at a wedding. The input quantity is the number of people attending the wedding, and the output quantity is the cost of the food. And then number three, we have the weight of a bag of oranges, as more oranges are added to the bag. The input quantity is the number of oranges, and the output quantity is the weight of the bag of oranges. For all three of these functions, the input values only take on certain values over the given interval. Notice how for the years since 2005, the number of people attending the wedding and the number of oranges in the bag can only be whole numbers, which is why these are discrete functions. Now let's look at some problems. Gasoline costs $2.50 per gallon. The total cost of the gas depends on the number of gallons pumped. Complete the table below. Looking at the table, in the first column we have gallons of gas, represented by the variable G. In the second column we have the cost in dollars, represented by the variable C. Because the cost of the gas is $2.50 per gallon, to determine the cost, we multiply $2.50 times the number of gallons pumped, which means if zero gallons of gas are pumped, the total cost is $0. If two gallons of gas are pumped, the cost is $2.50 times two, which is $5. If four gallons of gas are pumped, the cost is $2.50 times four, which is $10. Now we could keep going here, there's also a pattern in the table. Notice how each time the number of gallons increases by two, the cost in dollars increases by five. So the cost of six gallons is $15. The cost of eight gallons is $20. The cost of 10 gallons is $25. And the cost of 12 gallons is $30. Next, does the table represent a continuous or discrete function? Looking at the input values, notice how all of these are measurements, which means the number of gallons can take on any possible value over a given interval, and therefore the inputs are continuous, and because the points of this graph are connected, this table represents a continuous function. Next, write an equation that models the situation, and we will be using the variable C for cost in dollars, and G for the gallons of gas. And because the cost is $2.50 per gallon, 
our equation is C, the cost in dollars, equals $2.50 or 2.5 times G, the number of gallons of gas. And we should make a note that G can never be negative. So let's say G is greater than or equal to zero. The last part is to graph the equation. We will do this by plotting the points from the table. Each row represents an ordered pair, and each ordered pair is a point on the graph. The first ordered pair is zero comma zero, which is the origin. The next point is two comma five. From the origin, write two up five. The next ordered pair is four comma 10, write four up 10. The next ordered pair is six fifteen, write six up 15, and so on. And because we know we have a continuous function to form the graph, we connect the points. This is the graph of the continuous function. Let's look at one more example. You are put in charge of reserving hotel rooms for you and your classmates' field trip to New York. Each room costs $150 per night, including all taxes. The trip will be for two nights. You will need to reserve three to eight rooms. Complete the table below. You need to be a little careful here because each room costs $150 per night, but the stay is for two nights, which means each room will cost $300 for the two nights. Looking at the table, the first column is the number of rooms represented by the variable n, and the second column is the total cost in dollars represented by the variable c. To complete the table, we first need to determine the total cost if three rooms are reserved for two nights. Well, because it costs $300 to reserve one room for two nights, to reserve three rooms, it's going to cost $300 times three, or $900. To reserve four rooms, it's going to cost $300 times four, or $1,200. To reserve five rooms for two nights, it's going to cost $300 times five, or $1,500. Now we could keep going here, but notice how there is a pattern in the table. Each time the number of rooms increase by one, the total cost increases by $300, which means the cost of six rooms for two nights is going to be 1,500 plus 300, or 1,800 dollars. The cost for seven rooms for two nights is going to be 1,800 plus 300, or 2,100 dollars. And the cost for eight rooms for two nights is going to be 2,100 plus 300 dollars, or 2,400 dollars. The next question is, does the table represent a continuous or discrete function? Looking at the inputs from the table, because the number of rooms can only assume certain values over a given interval, or in this case, whole numbers from three to eight, this is an example of a discrete function. The values between these values of n don't make sense in this situation because we cannot reserve a fraction or decimal part of a room, making this a discrete function. Next, we're asked to write an equation that models the situation. To write the equation, we will use n for the number of rooms, and C for the total cost. And because it cost $300 to reserve one room for two nights, the total cost C is equal to $300 times N, or 300N. But N must be in the set of whole numbers from three to eight. And then finally, we're asked to graph the equation. Again, just keep in mind we have a discrete function, and therefore our graph will only be a set of points. And the ordered pairs from the table represent the points on the graph. The first ordered pair is three comma 900. From the origin, we move right three units and up 900 units. The next ordered pair is four comma 1,200. Right four, up 1,200. The next order pair is five comma 1,500, and so on. Six comma 1,800, seven comma 2,100, and finally eight comma 2,400. Again, we have a discrete function. We do not connect the points. I hope you found this helpful.